Welcome to the Knit, Knot, and Weave podcast. This is episode six. My name is Dorothy. You can find me on Ravelry as Philia, P-H-E-E-L-Y-A. And you can find me on Instagram under Knit, Knot, and Weave. So if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I so appreciate you returning after my long hiatus. And if you are a new viewer, welcome, welcome, welcome. I have been away for a little while. March and April were very difficult months for me. I'm not sure if it's the time of year, if it's the time of year in the school year, but I had um, was battling my depression there for a couple of months. Um, forced myself to get up and go to work because, you know, need the paycheck to survive. Um, I did force myself to go to the gym and continue with my kettlebell classes because I needed to do that. But I still had my episodes where I would sleep all day. I had episodes where I just couldn't think about casting on anything intricate. So what I have to share today is going to be a lot of simple knitting. But I, I think spring break finally got me out of my funk. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's kind of like the, the mindset that I know usually after spring break, the school year breezes by because we go through testing and then we have graduation and then the rest of the kids have their end of the year stuff and then it's June and we're out for the summer. If you have a drink, have a drink with me. If you have your knitting, sit back and knit with me. Well, I won't be knitting, but you, you're welcome to knit. You are welcome to knit. And let's get this show started. Grab your drink. You have some knitting. Grab your knitting and we'll get started. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm wearing. This is the My Boy Lollipop sweater by Nina Nancy, Nancy Ricci. Um, this, this sweater has been knit almost twice now. The first time I knit it, um, I did do a gauge swatch and I got gauge, but I don't know what happened when the first time I knit it, when I tried it on, when it was, you know, I was able to try it on cause it is a top down sweater. It was gapping over here very, very badly. And I'll put a picture up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So I had to pull out the whole sweater and I recast it on and I did some modifications. So the pattern actually calls for you to knit this sweater with 10 inches of negative ease. And that just was not going to work for me. So I knit one size smaller than my normal chest size. And I cast it on with a smaller needle, hoping that whatever was wrong would be corrected. And I modified it because the pattern actually calls for a seed stitch across the top here and I just decided to go with a one by one ribbing with a smaller needle. So I cast it on with a size six. I cast it on for the one size smaller than, than what I currently am. And I did the ribbing and then I switched to a size seven and I knit the rest of the sweater. I modified it to add sleeves and I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. I know, you can see it is a cropped sweater, but I wanted that because I'm hoping to, when it's a chilly spring or a chilly fall, I could wear it over um, some of my tank dresses and still be able to wear the dress, but I'll be nice and warm up top. The yarn is Lola Bean. It is her soybean base. It's a DK base and the color is vineyard. So I bought this yarn. This was actually a Rhinebeck purchase, Rhinebeck of 2021. Yes, I went to Rhinebeck. Yay. Hoping to go again this year. But um, first time I'm knitting with Lola Bean yarn and I absolutely love it. I did do helical knitting, 
with this sweater um, because I just, I didn't know, you know, you just never know with hand dyed yarn, but I think even if, even if I did not do helical knitting, um, this yarn is just dyed so well, I don't think I would have had any pooling, but better safe than sorry. So I'm very pleased with how it came out. It still needs to be blocked, but I wanted to show you guys and it needs, the ends need to be woven in, but you know, right now we'll just, we'll just stick them in there. So you don't, okay, don't worry about that. <laughs> and I, like I said, I was in a funk, but I was still knitting but it was simple knitting. Uh, when I sit down in the evenings, whether I'm listening to an audiobook to calm down, listening to music to calm down, or watching something on the iPad or the TV, I have to keep my hands busy. Um, I think that's also might be part of my ADHD. I have to keep my hands busy. So because I was going, th whatever it was I was going through, I, I'm depression, whatever. Um, I, I did not have the brain power to pattern search. I didn't have the brain powder to, the, the brain powder, the brain power, if I could speak, the brain power to do anything intricate. I just just needed something mindless. So I have a lot of socks to share with you. I have a couple of hats that have been finished since my last podcast where we did the whip parade. Um, I have a couple of whips to share with you guys. I have some yarn dyeing to share with you. I have some purchases and I have some happy mail. Woohoo! I also have a funny story to share with you guys. <laughs> have you ever mistakenly thrown something in the wash that you shouldn't have? Or you didn't realize that something that should not be washed in the washing machine or go through the dryer got stuck in your clothing and you didn't realize it? Yeah, that happened to me. This was a sock. This was, this was actually a sock pattern I designed for a club. Um, it was the, the dyer was fresh from the cauldron and I'm not sure if Jennifer is dying anymore, but this was a sock pattern I designed for this, um, this colorway. It was Tara. I can't think of her last name. Tara from, oh my God, I'm completely drawing a blank. Suki Stackhouse. <laughs> I'm s I can't believe. Oh my God. Anyway, see, I I'm still in, in a bit of a fog. But anyway, this is a sock base that has silk in it. And even though it is super wash, actually, no, I don't think it is super wash. One accidentally got caught in, I guess, probably in the pair of jeans I was wearing, and I didn't see it. So now I have an itty, well, I wouldn't say it's an itty bitty sock, but it's much smaller than its sister sock. <laughs> so note to self, carefully check your laundry before you throw your clothes in, especially if you know you've been wearing hand knit socks. So I will have to knit this pattern again for myself because I can't wear these anymore. So yes, always check your laundry. But now we'll move on to all the socks that I've been knitting. So my first pair of socks were knit with uh, Hot Knits Yarns Jimmy Sock. This is an, uh, I bought this uh, quite a while ago. Just a, a plethora of bright colors. And this was also the first time I did an afterthought heel. So here's the other. I followed the Crazy Sock Ladies tutorial for uh, afterthought heels. 
I had watched a couple of them and one tutorial that I watched had you, um, it didn't, it didn't, uh, let me start this over again because I can't speak. Some of the tutorials that I've watched ha would have you put in waste yarn as you were knitting them. I unfortunately had already gone beyond that because I knew I was going to do afterthought heels. I just didn't know there was different ways to do it. But anyway, uh, one of the tutorials, and maybe it was the crazy sock lady, but I don't, I don't think it was Kay. But they suggested that you not undo when you when you cut after you've picked up all your stitches on the smaller needles and you cut the the row between the two needles and you start to un you start to pick out the yarn they don't want they did they told you not to go all the way to the end because if you leave those two stitches on either side it helps to prevent like a hole from coming up from the afterthought heel so that's what I did and then I followed Kate from the crazy sock lady and I knit four rounds before I started doing my decreases and the Kitchener stitch bind off and they fit perfectly so now I am thinking I might go through my sock yarn stash and find some socks that, or find some yarn, I should say, find some yarns that my um, dad and brother-in-laws might like and have Aquila from the Lefty Knitter podcast. She has a cranking service up on Etsy and I might... Um, send her some yarn to crank up for me because I've knit my father one pair of socks for his huge feet and I swore I would never knit socks for a man again. <laughs> but now that I know how to do the afterthought heel, I might send out some yarn and have it cranked up and then I can just do the toes and the afterthought heels and I'll have Christmas gifts for the men in my family. Sounds like a plan, right? So that's one. Then I started knitting DK socks and I shared these on my last episode because they were started. Um, I followed Kay of the Crazy Sock Ladies uh, pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and I did it toe up. I'm a toe up sock knitter, but rounded toe, shadow wrap heel, two by two ribbing and I knit my socks two at a time and I don't split the yarn ball. I just knit from both ends of the yarn ball. And I just kept going until I ran out of yarn because it's DK weight. They're just going to be house socks, but I like the color. She was a new dyer when I bought this yarn. I saw it. I'm sorry. I didn't tell you who it was. It was the, the dyer is the crochet cove and she was a new dyer. There was a festival that we went to um, about an hour away from here. And she was there and I really liked the socks. I was looking for, D for specifically for DK sock yarn. And so when I went to the festival, she had them. And um, the Black Knitter podcast, I can't remember her name. I am so bad right now. My mind is so fogged. Anyway, in February, she was doing a make-along where you could either knit yarn that was dyed by uh, someone in the BIPOC community, or you could knit a pattern that was written by someone in the BIPOC community. And so since I knew I had the Crochet Cove yarn in my stash already, I went with this. And I will link, I will have links to all these um, shops in my show notes below. And I posted these on Instagram when I was done. And I tagged the dyer in it so that she could see them. And she noticed right away, and I don't know if this is going to come up on camera or not. But the, actually you might see it better on these toes here. Yeah, there you go. You see it better this way. She noticed right away that um, the dye didn't penetrate through the whole skein properly. You could see it was it's much, much lighter 
over here than on this one. And she contacted me on Instagram saying, uh, you know, how sorry she was that the, the yarn that the yarn had done that and that, you know, she didn't catch it before she attempted to sell it. And that, um, she would be happy to send me another skein to make up for it, which is part of my happy mail. So I will show that later. And it just so happens that the, the Black Dinner podcast, I wish I could remember the woman's name, uh, drew my name for a prize. So I will get to show you that in a little bit. So after I finish these, I casted on another pair of DK socks. I had purchased um, some yarn from Freckled Whimsy. This was her DK base and it was called Jelly Monster. And it comes with a full skein and a mini. Unfortunately, the mini was, was, it was, the mini was just enough to do toes and heels. I could not do the cuffs, but that's okay. And I really like this base. It's very, very soft. My stripes do not line up because like I said, I knit my socks two at a time and I knit them from both ends of the ball. So I just, I'm not gonna fiddle with splitting my yarn. If I happen to buy yarn for socks, that's, you know, 250 gram skeins, then yes, they might match up. But otherwise I don't split my skeins. Nobody's really gonna see my socks anyway. And they're only for me, so. So this was pair number three. And I know, I think my, I think I said my toilet, my goal was to knit 12 socks this year, 12 pairs. And I think I have two already done from previous episodes. Anyway, next up are um, another pair of DK socks back in March, was it March or the beginning of April? I think it was March, it was March. Um, a girlfriend of mine has a house down in Rehoboth Beach and we decided that we were gonna go to the um, Delmarva, bleh, I can speak, Delmarva Fiber Festival. It's a very small festival, but it's, you know, maybe 30 minutes from where she lives in Rehoboth. And so we, a couple of us went down and spent the weekend with her. And um, two of the women, the two of the friends that came wanted to knit DK socks. So I picked up another skein of DK sock weight because, you know, I had to teach them. So, you know, I had to have DK socks or DK weight yarn to teach them. And I picked this skein up from You Knits and So Lusu, and You is E W E. And this is their DK base. Very, very pretty. I was not normally a pink person, but bait the base. The colorway is called lip gloss. And again, rounded toes, shadow wrap heels, followed case uh, from the crazy sock lady cast it on. 48 stitches, two by two ribbing, and the stretchy cast off. And I love these. I have to, I can't show these because they're pink. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, these are my pink socks. And then I finished another the pair of socks that you saw in the previous episode. These were from, the, the yarn is from String Theory. It's String Theory self-striping. Uh, it's their MCN base. And the colorway is called Phosphorus. Now I did use some black yarn for my stash to do the toes, heels, and cuffs. These I knit on a slightly tighter gauge. I wanted to see if, uh, how it would feel to have a tighter knit sock. But I think if I, when I do a smaller needle, I think these were done on a zero, I need to go up to a 72 stitch count. But I like them. They came out pretty nice. 
hopefully the uh, cashmere won't pill too much. I've never, never worn cashmere socks before, so we'll see. And then lastly was a skein of yarn that I dyed. This is one of my uh, first attempts at playing around with uh, speckling, and it didn't go so well, but a pretty color nonetheless. A little ready, uh, more of a raspberry colorway. But again, the rounded toe, shadow wrap heel, toe up. I did do uh, ribbing across the top and all the way up the leg and the stretchy bind off. I find that I like the shorter cuff on my socks. Um, I tend to wear a lot of leggings and I think that the shorter sock doesn't make it look so bulky around my ankle and I can wear these over the, the bottom of the leggings or I can wear them under them and they don't cause too much bulk. So I might be knitting more shorter socks in the future. But my DKs, I'll probably still continue to, to knit until the, the skein runs out. Because why waste yarn? Really? Okay, next up, I finished a few hats. You've all seen these. Well, those of you that are returning have seen these in my previous episode. But I was on a finishing binge. So this is my Muscle Burrow. This is knit with fiber optics yarn. It was a... At least we think I shouldn't say we know for sure I think we think it was a kit but I've never seen fiber optics with a kit that was all fluorescence before but if they did have one my friend and niece probably found it and this came from her stash when we did the uh, the selling of her yarn and so here's one muscle burrow done I went down a needle size on this one and I did more increases to get to the size that I needed. But I, I like the, t the tighter gauge for this yarn. And this will probably go into the donation pile for our, um, we knit, bleh, I can't speak today, oh my goodness. My knitting group knits hats every year that we donate to an elementary school in our county that's a Title I school for the kids. So I'm sure some lucky elementary school kid will love to have a fluorescent hat. And then the next hat I finished was by Laura Penrose. She is also a podcaster and I can't cannot think of the name of her podcast. I'm sure it'll come to me like after I go to sleep tonight. But the hat is called the School Run Hat. It is a paid for pattern, so I can't talk much about it. But I like the brim. That's what attracted me to this hat. The brim, when it's folded, it does a little pico edge. And it, it kind of reminds me of Oh, God, what was the comic strip with uh, Veronica and Jughead? It kind of reminds me of the Jughead hat. <laughs> but anyway, it's a very cute hat. I really like it. I like the um, the pattern was very simple, very easy to follow, well written. The yarn is Trilogy Yarns. It's her MCN base, DK base. And I bought this purely for the name of the colorway. The colorway is called Unicorn Farts. Yes, ladies and gentlemen and people and friends, Unicorn Farts. But look at those colors. There's pinks and yellows and greens and I don't know if there's a dark purple or brown, but it's just so pretty. So this still needs to be blocked because it's, you could see where, if you don't put it on right, you could see where the, the fold up is. So it still needs a good blocking. And then, and then my last finished object is my hat design. 
this is a braid that I found. I think I was just doing a search to find different patterns. And somehow I think I ended up on the Russia, a Russian Pinterest site. And the chart was there for this. So I turned it into a hat pattern. And the yarn I used is, is an Anzula Croquette, which is the main uh, burgundyish raspberry base here. It's called Madam. And I held it together with Miss Babs Moon Glow, which is her mohair and silk base in the Maryland Sheep and Colorway from last year. So this pattern is, I believe it is all written up now. I just need to knit it one more time to make sure that the decreases are correct because I wanted to make sure that I didn't mess up the braid at the top at all. And then this pattern will be up on Ravelry. So that is it for my FOs. Like I said, two months and I really, I just needed simple knitting. Let's move on to whips. So my first two whips, which are in my Toad Hollow bag that I bought at the Sheep and Wool right before COVID, or I guess I should say the year before COVID because when COVID started, Sheep and Wool got canceled. And first pair of socks I'm going to show you was a mystery skein. I think I know who the dyer is, but this was again came out of Anissa's stash. And I was binging on The Watcher, the first series of The Watcher. And I was knitting along and knitting along and all of a sudden I realized I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so obviously this skein that I got from, from uh, her stash was not a full skein because I never use a full skein for my socks and these are awfully short socks. But anyway, I'm probably going to try and find something in my stash that will complement this to finish off these legs and bind off. But again, it was just another simple two by two ribbing on the leg, on the top of the foot, and then up the leg. So I thought it was a pretty, like, fire was getting blown out, pretty fiery orange color. And then my next pair of socks will actually match in their, well, they'll be, excuse me. I lost my balls. So this yarn is from brazenstitches.com. The colorway is black and white and red all over. They are two 50 gram skeins. Each skein is 230 yards. It's a four ply, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. And these are called Harmony Socks. So here they are, twin socks. I'm attempting to follow the crazy sock lady's idea of putting stitch markers every 10 rows just so I could start making my socks more even. I, I don't know if this is going to work or not. It's, it seems awfully fiddly to me, but I'll give it a try. 
this base is very very nice it's very soft and I'm really liking them so far so these actually like I said they came in two separate balls two separate hanks that I skeined up and I'm I guess I'm probably halfway up the foot but it's simple stockinette and those are the socks that I have on the needles. I will probably cast on another pair so that I can bring them to Sheep and Wool when we hang out at Sheep and Wool. Unfortunately, Mother Nature is not cooperating and it's supposed to rain on Saturday, which is a total bummer considering Sheep and Wool has been canceled for two years. The least she could have done was give us nice weather for the weekend. Anyway, I'm just happy the festival is going on. It's going to be chilly. As of right now, it's saying mid-50s with rain, which means it's going to be cold. Not looking forward to that. But I am looking forward to the podcasters meetup. I understand that Chevis from Chevy Rail Stuff Room is going to be there. I believe Kevin and Ray from Needles at the Ready are going to be there. And I think Vanessa from the Nitty Witch is going to be there. Um, Tammy from Somatic, Cinematic Skeins is going to be there. I'm looking forward to meeting her and all the rest. And Aquila from the Lefty Knitter podcast. I think, I think Michael from... Peace for Peace Crafting is going to be there. And then one of the sisters from Happy Hour at the Coop. And I can't remember which one. I think it's Leanne, maybe. I don't know. And I believe Gigi is going to be there from Gigi Knits. So the uh, podcasters meetup is going to be 2 o'clock on the hill, and I'm really looking forward to that and to meeting all the people that got me through COVID. So next up, I have my Weekender by Andrea Mowry. I just have it in this little basket case right now. And here we are. This is Malabrigo Rios. This is a bottom-up sweater. This is the first sweater I've ever knit bottom-up like this. I did make the back a little bit longer, and I intend to go a little bit longer in the length. Um, I did not go with the 10 inches of positive ease because, again, don't need much more positive ease over here. But I love this collar. I actually bought this yarn for a shawl. And the shawl pattern did not work out. But I'm very glad I can put it into this sweater. And I did not have enough in my stash for the whole sweater. So I went through my stash and found other colors that would fade into it. So I'm actually very pleased with the way this fade swatch came out. I'm just trying to figure out now when I need to switch considering it's a bottom-up sweater. But I should have plenty between all the different colors. And most of these are Malabrigo. There's Malabrigo Pines and then there's Malabrigo aqua and then malabrigo chris and then two different chersty cats and they just went together so well so i'm very pleased with my progress so far i am we do my knitting group is doing a knit along for this for april and may and hopefully i'll have this done by the end of may but who knows but it's, oh, it's so soft and squishy. 
And these are on my Haya Haya's size nine. So, so far those, that's the only modification I made to that one is the, the, the back split hem is a little bit longer than the pattern called for. And I'm probably gonna go, I think I'm supposed to knit 15 inches in the body before I split for the arms but I think I'm gonna go a little bit longer because I'm hoping to make that sweater long enough to be a tunic so that I could wear it with leggings. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. Next up is the very, very beginnings of a pattern. And yes, it's a new, new, I can't say a cast on because it's a crochet project, but I saw this and I don't think the person I saw it from is going to be putting out a pattern. So I'm going to try and create my own pattern that I will not be writing up either because I think it would just be too much. But it's going to consist of all these tiny circles, all in leftover yarns, fingering weight. I have a whopping six circles completed so far. <laughs> I know, I'm crazy. I don't know why I've got, I'm like knitting, knit, I'm using up all my fingering weights. But anyway, um, I'm planning to use mostly my pastel fingering weights for this particular project. It's going to be a top. And it's going to be with these circles and then they're going to be little squares in between that connect it. But we'll see how, how well that comes to fruition. This is my last whip for this episode is my granny stripes, my granny stripes leftovers blanket, leftovers, leftovers, leftover blank. Why am I even saying leftovers? Fingering scrap blanket. I'm telling you, brain fog. So, let me see. I know I put a progress keeper in here somewhere. Ah, there it is. So, when I shared this with you guys on the last episode, I was right here. So, here's my little stitch marker from a Trilogy Yarns mini uh, advent. So I knit, knit, I crocheted all those. Every stripe is a different color. No repeats. And it's extra wide because I like to be able to snuggle under my blankets. And you'll probably see this maybe one more time before it gets put away for the summer. Because once summer hits, I cannot have a blanket on my lap. But I'm just loving how I'm not even trying to color coordinate. I'm just sticking my hands in, grabbing the next mini that I have or the next scrap. Every row takes about... I think it's seven or eight grams per row of fingering weight. So if if the if the the leftover looks doesn't look right, I'll weigh it. And if I get at least nine or ten grams, I'll use it. And if I don't, it goes into another bag for another scrap project. <laughs> but I'm very pleased with how this is coming out. Um Maybe one day I'll do a scrappy episode. What do you guys do with your scraps? Do you guys do scrap blankets? I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out what to do with some of my heavier weight scraps. I have some I have a, a bin of DK and worsted weight leftovers or scraps. And I don't know what to do with them. If you guys have any suggestions, share them in the comments because I don't know what to do. So that is it for my whips. 
And now we will go on to stash enhancement. I've done a little shopping. A little. First one I'll show you guys is from Yarn Cafe Creations. This was um, ordered back when she was having her, I think she was clearing out her, her, her uh, inventory. I think it was like a 40, 30 or 40 percent off sale. And I saw this colorway on her site. Loyalty teacher. And I just had to get it. It is a hundred percent superwash Paul Worth yarn, fingering weight, 437 yards, and I got a sweater's quantity. I don't know what sweater it's gonna be yet, but it's gonna be a sweater one day. It came very nice and neatly packaged. Little thank you card inside which I thought was very cute. And then here is another skein of yarn that I purchased when we were at the Delmarva Fiber Festival. And again, it's the Unit So. It's her cute little. And this is her DK base. It's a superwash cashmere nylon. It's an 80 10 10. 230 yards and this colorway is called Wham! It's bright. Not quite as bright as it's showing up on camera, but it's bright. But it'll be fun. And those were the only two skeins of yarns that I purchased from the Delmarva Fiber Festival. That one and the one that I already knit up. I did buy a thing of fiber which I gave to my friend's sister, Margaret, and hopefully she will spin it up for me. She said she would. So now I just need to figure out something to make her as a thank you because I love homes homespun yarn. Oh, this is new. This just came today. This is my Row 1 Minis. This is a subscription. Every month, Row 1 will send you... Um, 10 mini skeins that are 10 grams each from um, a different yarn dyer every month so you get to sample their skeins. You can buy one package, you could buy two packages. If you buy two packages they do send you two different so you would technically get 20 colors from the dyer. So this is this month's May. Happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Let's see. Who is it this month? Oh, it's Super Fine Yarn Co. I actually know who this is. That's gorgeous purples and blues. Oh my gosh. So pretty. And then it always comes with a little package. Usually there's a, a little piece of candy, a little stitch marker, and a little information on the dyer. So there are two Haichus. I've never heard of this candy before. And then, oh, how cute, a little... watering... I can't think. Watering Canteen for Flowers as a stitch marker. And then they, they have a nice little note that comes in the package. It tells you the name of the yarn company. So like I said, this is Super Fine Yarn Co. And then it tells you, you get 100 grams of color. And this month we have Sage, Fossil, Spring, Lime, Sky, Thunder, Thistle, Lollipop, Punch, an apricot. Hmm, I'm looking forward to putting these into my blanket. So if you are into minis, this is a neat way to get some minis 
and to learn about the yarn dyer. So next up is an order I received from Dragon Horde Yarn. This is, oh, this is their Myth Sock set. This is Demeter. 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And it came with a mini. Beautiful colors. And, and this, I'm sorry, this. The owner of Dragon Horde Yarn is actually the daughter of the dyer for Yarn Cafe Creations. So I have one sock set and I ordered a package of minis from her. Look at those colors. Here, let me turn to the back. Sorry about all the crinkling. So these will be a fun pair of socks to knit up. Then I placed an order, another order with Freckled Whimsy. Um, I don't know what it is with the stripes, but I saw that. Isn't that pretty? So this is her happenstance base, which is an 80-20 superwashed merino nylon, 434 yards. And this color is rock you like a hurricane. You know us Gen Xers. <laughs> and then this one is on, I think this is a new base for her. This is a Tarhi, superwash Tarhi and nylon base. 90, 10, 465 yards. It's three ply. And this color, this colorway is called first time for everything. And there's supposed to be 20 stripes, 20 different colored stripes in this one. I can't wait to knit these up. And if they knit up nicely, I might have to buy. I didn't say that. But I might have to buy two more skeins because there's a top that Maddie and Kristen made that has that uses self-striping yarn across the top. And you know, the stripes go up vertical. I was about to say up vertical across the top. And I've been looking for a pretty stripe. So if this comes out nicely, I just might have Got two more purchases. One is from La Bien Ame. It's their new base, their Cori Confetti. And when I saw this on their website, I had to get it. It was, what is it called? Frambo Framboise Winter 2021. But it's a nice raspberry base with all the different speckles in it. And I bought a sweater's worth. And this other one, this last one I'm, I'm sharing, was purchased. Um, a woman in our knitting group was selling off her stash um, to raise money for, uh, I think it was Alzheimer's. And I saw this yarn and I thought it would make a real, it's my mother's color. And I thought it would make a pretty sweater for her. It's Valley Yarns Granville. It's a 90% Pima cotton, 10% Merino. And there's a sweater's worth. Uh, 50 gram skeins, 167 yards. And I think I have, I think there's 12 or 14 skeins. And I've already did a swatch, but now I need to find a sweater for it. My little swatch. But I was hoping to have a sweater knit for her for Mother's Day, but like I said, at two months my brain was in a fog. I, I feel like I'm still in a, a slight fog. And so that is it for my acquisitions. But I do have happy mail. Part of my happy mail happens to be yarn. So of course it's happy. So my first happy mail actually just came in today. It is my replacement yarn from the Crochet Cove. 
It is her decadent DK base. It's a superwash merino single ply. 100 grams is 240 yards. And this is called April Showers. Very pretty. This will make a really nice hat. Single ply. My next piece of happy mail was from the Black Knitter. Um, I, I said earlier that she ran a mail in February and my name was picked. And this is a yarn. It's yarn by Lady Dye Yarns. It's one skein of sock yarn, 80% merino wool, 20% nylon, and the colorway is candid and colorful. And it is colorful. This is going to make a wild pair of socks. So, I was very surprised when she called my name on her YouTube channel because I normally do not win anything. But apparently, I did. And that's not all. In March, Tammy from Cinematic Skeins was doing a giveaway as well. She has, she has actually done a couple of giveaways. But this was a giveaway for a bag, um, a skein of yarn that she dyed. She threw in another skein of yarn and a t-shirt and she pulled my name. So that's two months in a row. So I got this bag, which is very pretty. Let me see, hopefully. Ah, yes. The bag is from, oh, from Lila Styles. I have a couple of her bags but this one is dragons like dragon scales which if you know me anything mythical is right up my alley dragons included and it has a nice little hook if you want to put some stitch markers on here and a cute little tassel pull very nicely done oh how cute a katrinkles one yard nitty knotty that should be fun. And then I got a shirt. It says dogs and yarn. I don't have any dogs. But it's a nice shirt. Nice material too. And then, the best part, she threw in an, a, a skein from Savvy Skeins, which comes with a cute happy face stitch marker, which I can't get to face you guys. It is her Sensible Sock Dazed and Confused, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 240 yards. I'm sorry, 240 yards, 420 yards, and in bright rainbow colors. And then I got a skein of Tammy's yarn. Whoops. From Cinematic Skeins. And it came with two minis, which I'm super excited about. This one's got a little bit of sparkle. And this one she did with re resist dyeing, which is a fun, fun technique, but time consuming. She, I got her card. She is, she's not officially selling yet, but hopefully she will be soon. And she sent me a beautiful set of stitch markers. Look at these. Aren't those cute? And each flower is a different color, it looks like. There's a 
There's a blue, there's a yellow, it's purple, greeny purple. So thank you, Tammy. I love my new yarn. I love my new yarn. Oh, there's one more thing at the bottom of the box. A cute little sheep progress keeper. How cute. So lastly, what I have to share is just some yarn I dyed myself. This first one was done on a tweed base. It's a pretty brownish burgundy. I've got two skeins of that. And this is probably not gonna be repeatable because I didn't write it down. I was just playing around mixing different colors and I really wish I had, so. I don't know if I'll be selling these. And then here is one. I think I've decided, <coughs> excuse me. I think I've, oh my goodness, my necklace just broke. Nope, just came undone. Okay, we'll put that aside. This was, um, so I've been trying to think of something to call the skeins um, that I make when I, um, I can't think. Rebecca from Creatively Dyed Yarns, which is where I learned, not Creatively Dyed Yarns, Rebecca from Chem Knits. Oh my God, Creatively Dyed. She hasn't died in like 10 years. Rebecca from Chem Knits is where I learned a lot of my dyeing techniques. She has a wonderful podcast if you want to learn how to dye. She does a lot of experiments. But anyway, she, um, she does episodes that she calls Leave No Dye Behind, where she uses up everything that so she has leftovers. And when I clean my tools depending upon what I've used, whether it's measuring cups or um, little strainers, if I'm doing um, spring, uh, speckling, um, anything like that. If I, if I clean up any spills of dye and you know I clean out the rags, um, or if I made too much of something or colors just didn't turn out right and I just throw them all together to to get to make something to die. I know I'm not making any sense tonight. Anyway, they come out with one of a kind colors is what I'm trying to say, but I didn't know what I wanted to call them if I was going to put them up in my shop. And I think I know what I'm going to call them. Lady Luck, Lady Luck Skeins. So this is one Lady Luck Skein. And again, it's a beautiful, oh, no. Anyway, it's a beautiful color. And it was just from rinsing out all my different tools. I think there was a little bit of dye that uh, fell on a napkin. And so I tapped it into some water to save it. And that's how I got that. Then I have these two pinks. And this is interesting. These these are, they were dyed in the same uh, pan, but one is a superwash merino base where the base was pretty light. And then the other base is superwash with the Donical Noops. And yet the colors that, because the base, the original base for the Donical Noops is a much um, darker, a deeper cream than this base was so that you could see how the yarn, the dyes look different on the different bases, even though they were the exact same colors going into the pot side by side. But anyway, I do not know what I'm going to call these. They're pretty pinks with little 
dabbles of a, a light tannish beige. There are these two. Then I was just playing around with deep, deep colors. There's some purples, some blues. I think I may have put some black in here. But this would be another Lady Luck scheme because I don't know what I did. I was just playing with colors. Here's another one I watched. Oh, a girl, a girl in her wool. Okay, I remember a girl in her wool um, was showing how she died, and so I attempted to dye a skein the way she did, and this is what I came up with. It's a pretty much a purpley base with speckles of pinks and blues. I think it turned out pretty nice, but um, not real conducive for <coughs> the way it was done, not real conducive for um, making multiple skeins because it was only one skein in the pot the way she did it. And then this one I followed. Um, Rebecca's, uh, one of Rebecca's um, tutorials on dip dyeing. And so you dip it into a color and you'll see I have lots, there's a deeper tone down here than there is up at the top. There you can see it better. And that was fun. But again, not something to really do if you're going to be dying to sell because takes a lot to keep dunking the yarn in and out. I had done, um, basically I think I had dyed them half and half, like green at one end and blue at the other. And they were okay, but I, I had a feeling with the way the skein looked, it would be like a, a micro, if you're doing them for socks at least, it would be a micro stripe. And so then I threw in a little bit more blue to, so I don't know how these would work up, but they're pretty colors, even if I do say so myself. And then almost last, this is a pretty turquoisey base. I mixed a couple of blues to get to, and then I sprinkled black on top. For nice little speckles. Well, got some fine speckling, if you can see it. And then lastly, I played around with fluorescence. And these are all on the tweed base, which is an 8515, with basically a uh, orange and pink. I don't know why they go together so well. And then I speckled with blues and greens. And this is the only one I have named. I call this one Jelly Belly because this is actually the second time I've dyed this color. So I was very happy to, to know I was able to repeat this. And that is all I have for you. I know not a whole lot of dyeing, but at least it got me out of my funk. So, with that being said, if you are only here for yarny goodness, thank you. I hope you will come back. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and then, you know, hit the bell for notifications for the next episode. And I bid you adieu. Um, a couple of podcasters that I've watched have sort of added things that they were watching and reading. And I don't watch a whole lot, but I do read a whole lot. I'm a librarian, kind of.
part of the job. Um, I wanted to share a, a book that I just finished. It was called The Silent Patient. And for a while there, you kind of didn't know who really was the silent patient. Patient. But it was a very interesting read if you're into thrillers. There is, uh, it starts with um, a woman who's married and very deeply in love. Going through some sort of issues and her husband gives her a journal to, to try, for her to try and write down um, just what's going on in her life. Get her thoughts kind of out of her head and write them down. And so she tries it and, you know, part of the way the story is written is through her journal entries. And then um, uh, an episode happens between her and her husband that, that she winds up not talking anymore. So you think she is the silent patient. And then she winds up in a therapeutic um, facility and a psychotherapist um, applies for a job there and gets hired and, and he goes, he specifically wanted the job there because he wanted to help cure this woman. And there's a lot of back and forth between what happened in her life previously through her journal entries and then what's going on with the psychotherapist and the issues that he's having. And it was a very, very interesting read. So if you like thrillers, if you like psychological twists, this would be a good one. It's called The Silent Patient. And I think that is all for this episode. I am planning to go to Sheep and Wool. It's this weekend. I'm planning to go Saturday. I plan to um, go to the podcasters meetup at 2 o'clock on the hill. I don't know if I'm going to go back Sunday. I guess it might all depend on how much I get through on Saturday and whether my knees can take it or not another day and whether I actually got shop any shopping done Saturday because it's supposed to be a yucky, yucky weather day, which I'm very, very bummed about. Um, I haven't even I haven't even looked at the vendor list, so I don't know who's going to be there and who's not. I don't have anything in mind to purchase. I'm not going with a game plan. I don't think I've ever went to Sheep and Wool with a game plan, but who knows? I'm not looking for anything specific. I've done a lot of purchasing the last couple of months. Not enough knitting, but we will see. I will probably get some pictures from Sheep and Wool. I'll try to get some footage, hopefully the podcaster meetup, and I will share it in my next episode. So I bid you all a good night and I will see you soon. Soon. I can speak tonight. Soon. I will see you soon. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a subscribe. Share it with your friends. I'm really trying to build up my subscription. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. So if you can help out, I would appreciate it. And good night. Ciao, ciao.